if you quantize, you always lose some information, and, and that loss can be uh, uh, in the form of a distortion or a noise modulation, which can be quite audible under certain conditions. And the best you can do is, uh, is handle the quantization process in a way that makes the error independent of the signal. So uh, may basically converts it into a constant noise. And, and that's what uh, proper dither does, but the theory hadn't been fully developed. Although actually, as we found out, it was known to a few people who had kept it secret. One of them was Tom Stockham of, uh, of Soundstream. For proprietary reasons, they had discovered uh, the proper form of dither, uh, but had kept it to themselves and had used it. So when we discovered this ourselves in the mid-80s and published it, uh, people started saying, oh, I, I think that was known by some... And uh, through a devious process, we eventually found uh, uh, people who had uh, demonstrated this to themselves and never published it. Tom Stockham was one. Uh, the other person was uh, Nelson Wright. And it was interesting because he was a graduate student at MIT in the late 70s. And apparently this question had come up as a problem for another graduate student. And Nelson had actually uh, developed the, th the theory in order to solve the other student's question and, and had never got around to publishing it because he got a job uh, at that point and we were headed off to California to be one of the founders of Accuson. Through his ex-supervisor I learned of this and got hold of Nelson and he said, oh yes, I think I probably still have notes about this somewhere. He actually found it. He had written a handwritten manuscript about it. It never got published. That's from 1979. Tom Stockham discovered this in 1980. He, he showed me his notebooks. We uh, stumbled onto it around 1985. And so uh, Stockham and, and, and uh, John and myself have written joint papers with Robert Gray and, and Nelson Wright. So it isn't all now published. I think credit's been given to all the people, the early people who kept silent about it. So digital audio for us started in the early 80s and our interest in it from a from research point of view.